Well, children, um, what happens at the end of the year? I don't know if this is still a thing, but at the end of the year, when you go to school, you get something to bring home to your parents. What is it? A what, sorry? A graduation certificate? Yeah, that's right. But what about, okay, what about a report card? Do you guys get report cards still? Is that still a thing? Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Well, I never liked report card day. Uh, probably no one like. maybe there's some children that like report card day. I never liked report card day. Do you know why? Anyone guess why? Why would I not like report card day? That, yeah, that's probably an understatement. It's not so much that I wasn't always good, it's that I was always bad. Uh, so I was very naughty at school. So every time I would bring my report card home, it would have almost always something like a big letter D in it, and it would say, he could have done better, or he could have tried harder, or he never applies himself, or he distracts all the children around him, and on and on it went. And it was always so, every time we got the report card, I was like, oh no, I'm going to get in so much trouble. At the end of the year, it was like this troubling moment where my parents would sit down with me and they'd look at how I had done and they would talk me through it and they'd analyze and help me think about what I'm going to do next year. Well, that's a little bit what we get to do at the end of every year, don't we? We get to the end of the year. Nothing really changes, does it? Like, there's no difference between today and yesterday. It's just our calendar has a different number and we have to try and remember to write the right year now, which is, takes us about six months to get used to. Um, but there's nothing different, is there, between today and yesterday? It's the same. But everything feels a little bit different because it's a new year. And it's because it presents us with the opportunity to ask us the question, how did we do last year? What did we do last year? How did we serve the Lord last year? And that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to go to a parable that Jesus talks about a bush, a tree that grows up but produces no fruit. And we're going to use that to think about how we've done last year. And we're going to have a look at God's grace and patience to a tree that didn't produce fruit. And then we're going to think about how we're going to use our time into the next year. And then tonight we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to be thinking about what Jesus wants for 2023, which is pretty important. So let's pray and ask God to help us think about the last year. Father in heaven, we thank you for your grace to us. We thank you for another year, and we thank you for these children, and we pray that you would help all of us to consider our ways before you, to walk in humility and kindness and love and trust and grace. We thank you that you are the God who is patient and kind, even when we get it wrong. And we ask that, Lord, you would help us to think rightly, be with these children. And we ask that you would encourage their hearts to know the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we are turning through to the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel according to Luke, Luke chapter 13. And we're going to read from verse 1 to 9 this morning, but we're looking at just 6 to 9 and the parable of the barren fig tree, the parable of the barren fig tree. That was Luke 13, Luke chapter 13, starting at verse 1. This is God's holy and inerrant word for you today. There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think 
that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem. No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now, I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it, put manure on it. Then, if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word and let us come to him in a time of prayer. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you that we can read your word, that we can turn to your word and and find hope and life and purpose. That we can find joy and encouragement. That we can find chastisement and rebuke. And Lord, at different times we need different things. But your word is sufficient for them all. We thank you that your word always achieves what you send it to do. And so with that hope, with that expectation, we look to you today that you would use your word to bring about your purposes in our lives. That, Lord, we might be encouraged and built up and rebuked and disciplined, whatever it is that we need. God, give us eyes to behold wondrous things in your word. Help us to rejoice like one who finds rich spoils. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, it's that time of year again, isn't it? It's the end of the year. I wonder how many of you stayed up way too late last night. It's 2023. It was another opportunity to write up your New Year's resolutions or whatever it is you do. Maybe you're offended by the concept of New Year's resolutions. Maybe you think they're brilliant. Maybe you love them for the first week. We all have different opinions on these things. But for all of us, the end of year is significant, isn't it? There's something that's significant about it. But as I said to the children, there's no difference. It's just Sunday. And yesterday was Saturday. And nothing's changed. And yet we have parties and celebrations. And all we do is change the number on a calendar, right? And yet what a wonderful opportunity, isn't it? To stop and ponder a year gone by. To stop and consider what's happened in the last year in our own life. The, the tragedies and the moments of rejoicing. The easy times and the hard times. But especially how we've walked with the Lord. How we've faithfully served him. How we've honored him. How we've gone before him. And, and this, this passage here provides us with a very somber opportunity to assess the year go by, doesn't it? I mean, you almost don't need to say much to it. You could just sort of sit and, and read and ponder, and I'd encourage you to do that. Take the time today, this week, to, to open this chapter and, and look at this parable and consider for yourself, what sort of tree am I? What sort of year has it been? But what I want us to do this morning is, is just to, to notice a few things about this parable 
as, as we wander through it. No, notice, firstly, the immense privileges that this fig tree had. This, this wasn't a wild fig tree, was it? This wasn't a fig tree in a rocky crag. This wasn't a wild fig tree. Jesus isn't talking about a random bush on the side of the road. Nor is he talking about a bush in scorching heat. But he's talking about a fig tree that's been lovingly planted in a garden or in a vineyard or in an orchard with everything it needs, right? It has the shelter of walls. It has the care of a vine dresser. It has regular water. It has everything it needs to produce fruit. And that's exactly what Jesus is communicating to the Jew, to the Jews that were around him, right? He's looking at the, the people around him and he's saying, you, you have received everything you need. You have received immense privileges. Now, dependent upon your life, that will look very different. But for some of you, you've had the privilege of being planted in a vineyard, in a Christian vineyard, and you've experienced that privilege for maybe 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. You've had the privilege of, of elders who have gathered around you and nurtured you and cared for you. Pastors that have looked after you. You've had brothers and sisters to encourage you. You've never known a day in your life where you haven't known God's grace. Immense privileges, right? Even if you've been a believer for just this year, just one year, you can look back at 365 days of privileges given to you freely by God's grace. This fig tree didn't deserve any of that, did it? Did the fig tree earn to be planted as a seed in the vineyard? No, but by the owner's gracious love and kindness, he took a seed or a seedling and he planted it there to make it his very own fig tree. And so it is with you and I. We have, we have received so much as individuals and as a church. Yes, Jesus is primarily looking at the nation of Israel. But what is true of the nation of Israel is true of the church. And what is true of the church is true of you and I. We have had far more privileges than the people of the day of Israel, right? Not only have we seen the covenants they've seen, not only have we seen the patriarchs they've seen, we have seen the Son of God. We've just celebrated his new, his birth, right? Again, anew. We've had the joy of seeing the resurrection, of hearing the stories, of entering into his grace, on living on this side of the cross. Our privileges far exceed that of the Jews. And I wonder, with, with what privileges, with what privileges did you enter 2022 with? At the start of last year, what privileges did you have? Because with great privileges come great expectations, right? And so with all of these privileges that this tree had, the owner comes looking for fruit. Why? Because he expects to get fruit, right? It's been watered, it's been nurtured, it's been nourished, it's been cared for, it's been protected. The bandits have been kept out, so there should be fruit on the tree. And year one rolls by, and if, if assuming he was a law-keeping citizen... Year one, two, and three, they did not gather fruit. Year four, the fruit was for the Lord. And year five, they could enjoy it. So maybe it's year five and he comes to his tree and there's no fruit. And year six, he comes to the tree and there's no fruit. And year seven, he comes to the tree and there's no fruit. And at this point, he's thinking, where's my fruit? 
And it's, it's fair, isn't it? There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing legalistic about the owner wanting his tree to produce fruit, is there? No, he, he expects it because that's what trees do. And you can see what Jesus is saying to his hearers, can't you? You've been given, you've been given all of these privileges, all of these blessings. You've received everything you need. Are you going to produce the fruit? Have you been producing the fruit that your God would expect? It's not legalism. It's cause and effect, right? God has caused something to happen in your heart. He has given you a new heart. He has shed his grace upon you. He has mercifully acted in your life. And so as he ministers to us and builds us up, we should expect fruit. And God expects fruit. This is why Jesus says you judge a tree not by its bark, but by its fruit. They will know you by your works, Jesus says. And give glory to your Father in heaven. If, if we were to sit down, if we were to sit down and, and journal about the fruit that's been produced in our life in 2022, would it, would it match the expectations of the privileges we've received. It's a challenging thought, isn't it? Because I don't know about you, but when I look at the, the weight of the privileges, I see the scales going one direction. And so this man comes looking for his fruit, but he doesn't find it. And so we notice the privileges and we notice the expectations, but then notice the judgment. The man says, look, for three years, I have come seeking for this fig tree and I find none. Cut it down. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? Or, or maybe better translated, this tree is a waste of space. It achieves nothing. I mean, we talk about pe people being wastes of space, right? People say that. This tree is a waste of space. Why? Because it's sitting in a prime real estate in the garden, taking up room, taking up nutrients, taking up space for other crops, and it's doing nothing. It's yielding nothing. It's achieving nothing. It's helping nothing. You don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to make the connection, do you? See, Jesus is challenging his hearers to consider whether they're a waste of space. Brutal, I know. But it's not me saying it. It's Jesus saying it. When we look at the fruit we produce, when we look at the, the yield out of the immense privileges we're given, out of the grace that God has bestowed upon us, would we be described as a waste of space. There's, there's some churches like that. I don't think we are. But there are some churches like that. I recently read an article about a church that had a, a special service for praying to plants and repenting for their sins against creation. I mean, that's a waste of space, right? And, and if you think that's not the sort of Jesus, you know, doesn't Jesus say to a church in Revelation, beware or I'm going to come and take the lampstand away. 
I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. And, you know, the striking thing about the words here, cut it down, is it just echoes in the Gospel of Luke. Because if you go all the way back to chapter 3, you see John the Baptist saying the same thing. Have a look at Luke chapter 3. Remember Luke chapter 3, this is John the Baptist preparing the way. And in verse 7, he said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now, the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Do you hear the echoes of this parable? What would God's judgment be of 2023? I, I know it's easy for us to make our judgments, rightly or wrongly, but what would God's judgment of our 2022 be? And yet notice that having heard of the privileges and the expectations and the judgment, we hear intercession. Notice the intercession. As soon as the words... Why should it use up the ground? Why, why the waste of space comes out? The vine dresser intercedes. He pleads with the master and says, Sir, let it alone. This year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. You know, there's a, there's a debate among the commentators. You'd go to the commentators and, and read a whole heap of commentators, and they all disagree, as commentators always do for some weird reason. And, and there's a big debate. Who is, who is the vine dresser? And some of you just go, oh, it's Jesus. It's easy. And some say that. And some say, actually, it's the Spirit. Because it's the Spirit's job, isn't it, to work in our hearts and to produce fruit within us. And so it's speaking about the ministry of the Spirit. But the reality is it's a both end, right? Because, yes, it, it's Christ who intercedes on our behalf. And so as, as the plant is fruitless, as the plant is under the judgment of God, someone rises up and pleads for time. God, time. Father, give time and let me work. Let me work and see if I can restore this tree. That it could be Christ, that could be the Spirit. The reality is it's both. They're both called interceders. They're both called the one who works to produce within us. But you know, the main point is we're given a chance. We're given a second chance. Do you realize that? Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, yes, you've been a waste of space. Yes, 2022 has not been great, but, but there's another year. But there's another year. God has patience. Do you hear the patience of the Lord in this? Get, get, just give it a year and let me work in his heart. Let me work in her heart. And let us see if fruit is produced. The interceder pleads for patience, and it's given. It's given from what we can assume. And yet the, the patience of God that comes through this intercession is limited. The patience of God doesn't last forever. The steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. But the patience of God upon sinners does not 
endure forever. We don't know if we're going to make it to the end of 2023, do we? I mean, we didn't know if we were going to make it here today. For some of us, that's a far greater reality than others. But it's equally true for all of us, isn't it? You could die in a car accident before you get to 2024. You could get cancer and die. You could just not wake up one morning. Like, this happens. You may not make it to 2024. You do not, you cannot assume or presume, as Paul would say, upon the kindness of God. Do not presume upon the kindness of God. You do not know if the patience of God will last another year for you. You can't say, oh, I'll live for Christ next year. I'll produce fruit next year. I'll come to Christ next year. You can't say that because you don't know if next year will exist. God has given you today to live, not tomorrow. All we have is the present to live in, right? You can't live in tomorrow. You can only live today. And God Christ is calling the Jews. He's calling the church. He's calling us to respond. But what type of response is he calling for? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. Is he saying, you guys weren't good enough in 2022. You're a bunch of slackers. Would you please start pulling your weight like a grumpy father when the kids haven't done the housework? Is that what God is doing here? No. Yes, it is a savage and somber assessment upon the Jews and upon ourselves. Let's not kid ourselves. However, this is a call to repentance. That's why these three verses are connected to the section before it. I don't know if you maybe you felt like it, it's a bit weirdly connected. It's like the story about this tragedy or two tragedies, and then all of a sudden the story about a tree. Why? The why is because the appropriate response at the end of the year is repentance. And it's always the appropriate response at the end of the year. But you have to understand what's meant by repentance. Repentance is not saying sorry. You know, often we, we tend to default to that. You know what I mean? Like when, when the preacher says, you need to repent of your sins. We think, I need to be sorry for my sins. But that's not what the word means here. The word, the word repentance means to change or turn direction, to turn around, to turn from one thing to another thing. So Jesus says, like John the Baptist to the crowds, unless you repent, you also will perish. And then he tells the story. What's he saying? He's saying, you have not changed your ways. You have not turned to God and produced the fruit of repentance. And that's what is missing so often in our lives, isn't it? See, we, we know that this thing in our hand is not fruit, but poison. But we don't turn from it and turn to fruit. We eat it anyway. Don't we do that? We know the right way because God's expressed it, but we don't turn to it and walk in it. And so the end of 2022, the start of 2023, today becomes an opportunity again, like every day, for you to repent, for you to turn from wicked ways and turn to God and live and produce fruit in keeping with repentance. 
hearts, a changed heart, a changed attitude, a changed mind. Why? Because the grace of God has welled up within us because of all of the immense privileges bleeding into our hearts and producing the very thing God wants. This is the glory of this passage, is that we don't do any of it. So we didn't plant it. We didn't come to it. We didn't call it to repentance. We can't even make it repent. It's a sovereign work of God's grace as he works in the hearts of his people to turn them towards the newness of life. And I just wonder if maybe one person here today, maybe just one of you, is sitting here thinking, I have never, ever really repented of my sin. I've been sorry. I've apologized, but I've never turned from my sin in my life before. May God grant you to do so. May God give you a new heart to turn to him, to turn from your sin and live before it's too late. Before the axe is laid to the root of the tree and the tree comes tumbling down. Or maybe for you, this is just a, just a reminder, another reminder to set your minds above. To pursue not earthly things that perish, that fade, that the moth eats and the thief breaks in and steals and the rust destroys. But rather, like the entirety of the purpose of chapter 12, read it later. You would set your mind for action and set it above and live for Christ. Or maybe this for you is just a wonderful reminder of what you've been so faithfully doing all year long. And may God commend you by his grace. But may each and every one of us look to him, look to him. And walk for him and produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Let us pray. Father in heaven, these are somber truths. And Lord, I feel it. We all feel it, Lord. We all fail. We all get it wrong. None of us produces fruit perfectly. None of us walks perfectly. And we thank you for the intercession of Christ. We thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit, working in us that which is pleasing in your sight. And we ask, Lord, Grant us to walk in repentance. Grant us, as we think about the last year, to turn to you and to produce fruit of righteousness, fruit of godliness, fruit of holiness, fruit in keeping with repentance. Help us, Lord. We're so prone to wander, so prone to leave the one we love. So take it, Lord, take it all. Not a might do we withhold. We consecrate it all to you. All to Jesus. We surrender. All to thee. Lord, be with us. Forgive us our sins. Hold our trespasses not against us. Cleanse us of all our iniquity. Take our guilt away. Cleanse our consciences. And Lord, free us 
from the weight and the burden of sin. That we might walk in newness of life, humbly before you. We thank you for the grace of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.